Hey everybody, today we are talking about timing chain stretch on the VW Audi 2.0 TSI engines. And we're gonna be checking for stretch using a mobile handheld scanner. Then we're also gonna pull the tensioner plug and see how the tensioner looks. So let's jump in. Here we are in the car, and as you can see, the headliner's tickling my hair here, so that's falling down. It's unfortunate. 109,000 miles. Got it fully heated up. I've tried this a couple times, so I already kind of know what to expect. Got the app open here. We're using the OBD11 brand. This is the next-gen device, which is a little bit quicker, but the main reason is it supports iOS, which is what my mom has. This is her car. I've used the blue driver a ton. I scanned with both of these and they both found the same codes, but this one is gonna give you the advanced diagnostics that we're gonna need for checking this uh, the cam angle. Then I've also got a replacement sensor. These are affordable, but unfortunately, a lot of the time, as you're gonna see, if the chain is actually stretched, it's not that this is reading the wrong value, it's that the value is just bad. And so we take this out and plug it in down here. Then we go ahead, open the app, hit connect, tap that, and we wait. Okay, we're already fully connected up here. I already scanned it and cleared the codes earlier, so we're not gonna do that, but you should check that while you're in here. Then we're gonna, gonna go to the control units, which you can click here, or you can go to vehicle, and then scroll down to control units. We're gonna go to the engine, and then we're gonna go to live data. Okay, we're gonna put in 93. We're gonna hit okay, and you're gonna see it's the camshaft adjustment adaptation. Now I should clarify with what I said earlier is, this is a modern variable valve timing engine. It can change the timing advance continually while you run the vehicle, okay? And you're gonna be able to see that with any type of scan tool that has live data, the timing advance. This is not the timing advance, this is the adaptation. So that's why we need the fancy scanner, is this is a constant value, it's not gonna change Except for, I do want to say this because one of the other videos I saw didn't show this. Watch as we rev up here. Going to go ahead and rev up the engine a bit. And you're going to see how that value climbs. Now what you want to do is go and drive. Do a road test. The highest value that I saw while driving was negative 3.86. So for some reason, when you first start the engine it's gonna show possibly a lower value than if you rev it up. And you wanna see the highest, the worst case scenario. Now, a bad number to have is the Volkswagen spec is plus or minus five degrees, but some people online think that even at negative four, you're gonna have issues. So let's go ahead and swap out the sensor and show you that it's the same thing, and then we'll go from there. This truly is a one minute install, okay? I already have this loose. We take off the beauty cover, it just pops off. We're looking for the sensor, it's right here. Gonna go ahead and push in on the little tab, pull back on the connector. Then we're gonna take a T30 Torx, and we got the new sensor right here, about 35 bucks from the local auto parts store, or you can get it cheaper online. Gonna go ahead and undo this bolt here. All right, watch out, that's gonna be hot. Okay, we're gonna pull our old sensor out here, which is the OEM one. Interestingly, this one is metal and the replacement one is plastic, so that's kind of funny. Gonna put that back in, tighten that up, and that's it. Go ahead and start her up. We're gonna watch that value, we're gonna rev it up first. Give it a little bit of rev in there to let it settle in. And then we're gonna see right there, pretty much the same value, maybe a little bit different, but that sensor was not the problem. Or if it was, it was only off by 0.1 degrees, not a big deal. We're gonna check the timing chain tensioner, but first we gotta drop this belly pan, and man, is it a pain. You've got a bunch, you've got these two big T45s, and you've got a bunch of little T25s, you gotta pull this silver stuff off to get to some of the bolts. And then there's one right here in the center, which you can barely even see, that's gonna trick you up right here. And then lastly, get yourself a screwdriver in here and push up onto these, because these actually clip it in up there. To make sure that those are all off to be able to fully drop this stupid plastic junk down. Now we can get up underneath and see what we need to see, which is gonna be 
that little plug right up there is what we're going to be going at. Okay, here's that plug under there, and you can see I've already got it loose. I just had to push my flathead under here, and then I'm able to pry it off. Oh, and there it comes. We're going to go ahead and look in this hole, and I'll put up a graphic that I found, and I'll show you what we're looking for is, unfortunately, uh, within the 2012 model year, it sounds like they changed from the old revision to the new revision. And if I have the old revision, that's really bad. But even if I have the new one, I still want to check how far out it is, how many teeth you can see. Because the farther it is out, the more stretch in the chain that it's, it's holding slack against. Here's the part number for that plug. I'm going to take a look at mine and see whether I can reuse it. Honestly, that doesn't look that bad. I don't know. I might just replace it though. It's only about five bucks. So just buy one just in case you ruin your old plug anyways. And then I'm going to look in there. I've got a mirror on a stick and I've also got this boroscope here that I might use if it's tough to see because this is a really weird angle. But we're going to try and look in there and see what we can see as, as, far, as, uh, as far as that tensioner goes quick update I decided to take this boost pipe off to be able to get a better look so first off you can pull this metal clip off and then wiggle this out but watch out it'll drip oil all over you there's a little bit of oil put a rag in both ends to catch that oil then you have two t30 captive bolts that hold this on and then the last trick is you're gonna be tempted to try and use a little small wrench and start loosening this hose clamp because it's going to be blocked by this cross member but then once you undo it here you can pull it down enough to get your ratchet on there it makes it so much easier it's a seven millimeter hose clamp up there I went ahead and removed this piece of pipe as well to get good view you don't actually have to remove these metal ring clips you just pull them out and then it'll let it slide out but anyways so we're gonna go ahead and look inside of here hopefully the mirror will give me a good enough view with the light staying there oh how do i do this okay it might be a little bit tricky to see especially on the camera without very much light but i do have the old style tensioner you can see because of that clip there so that's unfortunate that clip falls out and then there's a little prawl inside that comes loose and then that allows it to collapse however the good news is it isn't really extended all that far which is kind of surprising to me i put the new plug in and i coated it with oil before inserting it and it went in really easy now a trick with these is i pulled this out and i put it in but you got to hear it click you see how it clicked there to know that it's in and it won't just pull back out and I don't know why people online were trying to use the mirror without just pulling this piping out. The biggest trick was just to take this side off first, pull it back, and then get the hose clamp up here. Not a big deal at all. Another interesting thing about this vehicle is check out the underside. Isn't it interesting how Volkswagen, even though it's a two-wheel drive vehicle, already has the provisions and everything as if it was four-wheel drive? It's kind of interesting they didn't use a different body shell. Well, I got everything put back together. As you can tell, it's nighttime now, and so that just shows how long it takes to put all that stupid plastic crap back up underneath. But anyways, uh, unfortunately, we do have some chain stretch, but it isn't quite mission critical yet to where we're going to be destroying the engine if the chain were to jump, because that happens more around 5 degrees from what I can tell. But we're working our way there, and the tensioner is also the bad version, the old one without the revision so that could also fail although if it's lasted this long it probably isn't going to it's probably the ones that failed early on that we're going to fail but you never know anyways hope you'll like and subscribe give me all that support because as you can tell it takes about two or three times as long to do something when you film it but i wanted to get a video out i watched a couple videos which were extremely helpful and i'll link those down below so that you can go and reference those as my sources so to speak but uh, I know in one video I didn't see somebody both use the scanner to check the the um, the degrees and then also replace the sensor and check again and then also actually physically check the tensioner to see how many notches out it was so I got all three of those in one video and I think that that will hopefully help someone out there with one of these junky uh, 2.0 TSI engines <laughs> anyways all right I'll see you next time bye thank you